also said before, I'm going to present today Art of Communication uh, pro mostly incorporates to enhance organizational effectiveness. Some of the goals that uh, we want to achieve after this presentation are highlighting the significance of effective communication in corporate settings, explore key uh, principles and sorry barriers to communication, provide insights into different communication channels and their pros and cons, or uh, advantages and disadvantages, offer practical uh, strategies for improving communication into the workplace, emphasize the role of leadership and technology in enhancing corporate communication and showcasing the impact of communication on organizational success through case studies or real life examples. We are going to uh, go uh, through all of uh, these um, goals or all of these insights uh, briefly, and then we are also going to have a discussion about real life ex uh, experiences that we might have or uh, what kind of things we can choose in order to uh, improve in terms of communication. Importance of communication in corporate settings. As we said before, it is very important, not only in corporate setting, I would say, but also in uh, everyday uh, life, in everything that we may do, uh, to know how to uh, effectively communicate is like an art, and it's an art on its own. So uh, it's also the manner of how we choose to communicate. And there are uh, different things that we need to keep in mind before we choose to open up communication, not only in corporates, because corporates or let's say workplaces are uh, for us uh, one of uh, the places or the environments that we spend most of our time during the day. So this is one of the most important things. Okay, let's start. Uh, the first, effective communication is the lifeblood of any successful co uh, corporation. It serves several critical responses such as information sharing, so it is important, communication is important because it is responsible for information sharing. If we don't communicate, then we don't know how to share what we think or how to share our knowledge and also how to take what the other has to say. Communication facilitates the flow of information within an organization, ensuring that employees have access to the knowledge and resources needed to perform their jobs effectively. Coordination. Coordination enables uh, communication enables coordination among different departments and team, ensuring that everyone is aligned towards common goals. So it also affects into the development of coordination. Decision making. Communication allows for the exchange of ideas, enabling informed decision making processes within the organization. Conflict resolution. Effective communication address conflicts and sorry. Effective uh, communication uh, helps addressing conflicts and disputes, preventing them from escalating and disrupting the workplace. And last, employee engagement. Uh, communication plays a crucial role in engaging and motivating employees, which in turn improve. In, uh, improve productivity and job satisfaction. So uh, here we have some of uh, the benefits or the importance of communication in the workplace or corporate settings. And if we have a look on all of them, like uh, information sharing, coordination, decision making, conflict resolution and employee engagement, what do we see? We see that these are some of the key points into developing a successful uh, business or a successful workplace. 
And this is also related to the topics that I have presented before, where we have presented the employee engagement, the employee assessment, uh, the organizational psychology, the organization within a workplace. So we see that the center of all this, or one of the central key points, it's actually communication. So without communication, we cannot do all of this other factors that lead to success. Why effective communication matters? Uh, we see some of the points. First, improve employee uh, productivity. According to the Gallup study, companies with highly engaged work forces outperform their peers by 140 7% in earnings per share. Enhance team collaboration. Uh, Mc, McKinsey report found that effective communication and collaboration can improve uh, productivity by 20 to 25%. It reduces workplace conflicts. The American Management Association reports that ineffective communication is the primary cause of uh, workplace conflicts. It boosts customer satisfaction. Research by local information suggests that poor communication is the leading factor in customer atritio. Uh, drive innovation. A study by MIT Sloan Management Review found uh, that organization with a culture of open and transparent communication are more innovative. So... Here we also see that this is uh, communication is the key factor, or most probably effective communication is the key factor on which we uh, choose to engage in all of the environment where we are. Types of corporate communication. We have internal versus external communication. And then we have formal or informal communication. These are uh, types of communication into corporates or into workplace. And it is just uh, how we choose. And when we need to choose these uh, types to use them. So we first define the situation and then we choose our type of communication. Balancing internal and external communication as well as formal and informal communication is essential for a well-functioning organization. Effective internal communication ensures that the workforce is aligned and informed, while external communication helps build the organization rep reputation and relationship with stakeholders. A combination of Formal and informal communication can promote transparency and flexibility, as well as contribute to a healthy cult uh, corporate culture. So, as I said before, we first observe the situation and then we see what type of communication we need to use into this situation to help us have a positive result at the end. Key principles of effective communication. As some of the key principles of effective communication, we can include clarity, uh, consistency, uh, consistency, and feedback. We're going to see them one by one. Clarity. Clarity in communication means that the message is easy to understand. It avoids jargon, ambiguity, or complex language. So. We need to be clear in the form that we choose to communicate something that we want. Clear communication helps prevent <coughs> misunderstandings and ensures that the intended message is received uh, accurately. It involves using straightforward and plain language, organizing information logically and providing context when necessary. Consistency. Consistency refers to delivering a message with uh, brevity and without an unnecessary detail. It ensures that the message is focused uh, to, and to the point, 
saving time for both the sender and the receiver of uh, the information. Consist communication is essential for maintaining the audience attention and preventing information overload. Consistency. Consistency in communication means maintaining a uniformity in messaging, tone, and branding across various channels and interactions. It helps in building a strong and recognizable corporate identity. Consistency is crucial for avoiding confusion and presenting a united front to both internal and external audience. And the last one, but not least, feedback. Uh, feedback is the process of receiving a response to a, re to a reaction of a message. It is an essential element of effective communication as it allows the center to go together the message was understood and received as intended. Ms. Lushi, before we go to the uh, next slide, uh, there is a request that is coming from the uh, chat box, and I would like to uh, relay that to you. Uh, our participants are asking whether it could be possible for you to uh, uh, extend your screen to have the view in full screen. Uh, ah, yes, of course. Okay. Sorry. Thank you very much. Okay, you see my screen now? We, we can see the screen, but if you okay. would, uh, okay. all right, yeah, this yeah. is what we yeah, are. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I totally. Thank I you totally, very much. All right. I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, I was telling as um, the last is feedback, uh, and it is also one of the most important things, uh, I would say, not only in communication, but also in other things, mostly in works, uh, relations. It also may uh, be used for improving your work, so you know what to do and how to deliver a quality job. Feedback is the process of receiving a response or reaction to a message. It is essential element of effective communication as it allows the sender to go together uh, whether the message was understood and received as intended. Feedback can be both verbal and nonverbal and serves to improve communication by enabling adjust adjustments and clarifications. We talked about uh, some of the key points, we talked about some of the key uh, principles, we talked about why effective communication is important. And now we are going to uh, have an insight on also what can be some of the um, barriers or what we need to keep in mind in order to have effective communication. First, uh, I would say that is the communication channels. Uh, because here we have it at last at the chart, but I'd say that it's very important that we see the channels on which we are communicating. And here we are talking for the workplace. And um, I would say, for example, most of the well-knowns are emails or meetings or some reports. So we show in a, in a way that is uh, important and it's used in corporates. Nonverbal communication. The, signif the significance of body language, of tone and facial expressions. Sometimes, uh, also in real life, we may say something and communicate something, but our facial expressions say another thing. So we need to also be very, um, be very careful uh, on our communication. So it's not only what we say by words, but it's also how we react with our body, with our tone, or also with facial uh, expressions. Active listening is important as is the first step on understanding and uh, what the other is telling and answering the right arguments. So active listening is a barrier to effective communication because 
you may be listening to somebody but uh, it cannot be always active listening active listening and by active listening i mean that you are actually hearing and you are understanding so you are fully focused on what the other is saying you are not just listening to them but you are actively listening to them so you are listening and you are understanding cultural sensitivity culture has also an impact on, on communication so it is better that we consider these features when making the decision to uh, communicate so um, i would say that as in also other places uh, cultural sensitivity uh, may be a factor or as a barrier on effective communication because as cultures are different you may say something that is not appropriate for another person so we need to be also very careful on what we think and also think about mostly in the workplace about the diversity and inclusion uh, ethics so we don't say something that can affect others so we need to respect all of uh, these barriers let's say and to include everybody and be careful to respect and not uh, harm or let's say hurt somebody else with our things effective meetings uh, so in the meetings some of the effective communication needs to be calm and active to set goals, to be actively listening, and uh, also this can be by, for example, make question a time to time to participants so you know that they're uh, actively listening to you and uh, this can be like an effective meeting for them. Crisis communication. Effective crisis communication is essential in maintaining the reputation of an organization and many minimizing damage during difficult times. It requires a proactive and transparent approach, focusing on providing accurate information, empathy, and support to those affected. Some of the tools that can be used to effective communication uh, are in uh, interdepartmental uh, communication, uh, leadership, maybe an influence also, training and development, employee feedback and engagement, and measuring communication success. Let's talk about them one by one. Cross-departmental uh, uh, collaboration is essential for achieving organizational goals, fostering innovation, improving communication, and maximizing the efficiency of resources. It enhances an organizational ability to adapt to change and address challenges, ultimately contributing to its overall success and uh, competitiveness into the market. The role of leadership. Leadership's responsibility in fostering effective communication is multifaced. Leading by example is paramount because it sets the standard for the entire organization. When leaders demonstrate open, transparent and respectful communication, they create a workplace culture that values and promotes effective communication, leading to increased productivity, engagement and organizational success. Next, it's uh, training and uh, development. Communication training equips uh, employees with the skills to express themselves clearly, listen effectively, and resolve conflicts. It fosters the culture of open, uh, effective communication, which contributes to better teamwork and collaboration. Regular communication training allows employees to continually refine their skills and adapt to evolving communication technologies and methods. It supports their professional development, making them more effective communicators. One of the other tools is uh, employee feedback and engagement. 
By encouraging uh, employees to provide feedback promotes a two-way communication culture. Employees feel heard, which enhances their sense of involvement and commitment to the organization. So if we uh, ask for their feedback. Engaged employees are more likely to actively uh, participate in communication efforts and their enthusiasm and commitment in enhance the quality and effectiveness of communication, leading to better collabor collaboration as well as results. And last one, measuring communication success. KPIs such as uh, employee engagement service can measure the effectiveness of internal uh, communication. KPIs are assessments about uh, employee engagement uh, services where uh, employees are, are asked about their engagement and about communication and about relationships during uh, and into the organization or the workplace. They help organizations identify areas that need improvement. So it's like, uh, let's say, a collaboration uh, between uh, employees and employees is uh, so they can understand uh, what uh, areas need improvement and they take this in forms of assessments or surveys from their uh, employees uh, feedback so they can understand on how they can uh, improve to better communication and to better uh, basically workplace environment. Effective communication is the cornerstone of success in corporate settings. This presentation uh, explores the art of communication within organizations, emphasizing its pivotal role in achieving corporate goals and fostering a healthy workplace culture. It delves into the significance, significance of clarity, consistency, consistency, and feedback in communication. By examining the impact of various communication channels, both internal and external, this presentation highlights the importance of aligning corporate communication with organizational sub-objectives. In addition, the presentation underscores the leadership's responsibility in setting the communication tone and leading by example. By mastering the art of communication, organization can enhance collaboration, innovation, and productivity, while building trust and maintaining a competitive edge into the business world. To effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication to others. And this is a quote told by Tony Robbins, which is an author, speaker, and coach. Thank you so much for being today into this presentation. Uh, now, if you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer your questions and we can have a discussion for this topic. Thank you so much once again. I hope that this has been a interesting and also uh, helpful topic and